Well, good morning, Lighthouse. We didn't know that when we had the women's choir that it was going to be like, we're going to take up the whole group. We, we got all the people up here. Anyway, this morning we want to say, first of all, welcome to our Heavenly Father for being such an awesome daddy. And we are so glad to be in his house this morning. And we want to say to all the dads in the house, Happy Father's Day to you. You look so good today. And we just came this morning to worship the Lord. We came to lift up his name. And so let's, would you stand if you can as we honor God this morning? Look at him. Hi, y'all. <laughs> would you stand as we honor the Lord? Father, this morning we just want to first of all say thank you that you have allowed us to wake up this morning. Thank you, God, that you brought us into your house today. And we have come not to perform or do something awesome. We came, Lord, to worship you. We came to magnify your name. We came to lift you up. And we came to say, Daddy... Happy Father's Day. Happy we love you, Lord, and we just ask that you would just, just allow your anointing to yes. fill up the space. Yes. Lord, we know that others are on their way this morning, but we just ask you, Lord, to just be in the midst of us. Just have your way in us, Lord. Even as we sing to the glory of the Lord, we again came to magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Sing with us this morning. We're going to be overcomers today, right? Y'all yep. know what overcomer means? Yeah. Overcomer means we overcome. It means we got victory, amen? Yeah. Yeah. Let's worship the Lord, all right?
his keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper.
is the Alpha. And he is the Omega. Yes, he is. And he is. And he is worthy of all of our praise. Those who are able to stand, please stand. Father, you are Alpha and you are Omega. Father, you are the beginning and you are the end. Lord, we just thank you, Father. We thank you and we worship you. We honor and we adore you for who you are, oh God. Today we celebrate Father's Day. I ask that you would be with all of the fathers, oh God, that you would continue to give them the wisdom, the knowledge and direction on the father they are supposed to be, oh God. Continue to guide them, oh God. Continue to give them the faith, oh God. Con con continue to give them the patience that they need, oh God. Help them to listen to you. Help them to obey you, oh God. Again, Lord, we just thank you, oh God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God. We thank you that, Lord, you give us chance after chance, oh God. You give us opportunity after opportunity, Lord, to get it right with you, oh God, to have a true relationship with you, oh God. Father, the song says, even when I don't see it, you're working, oh God. When all hope is lost, oh God, when we don't know what else to do, oh God, when we are worrying about whatever the case may be, oh God, help us to know that you're working, oh God, that you're preparing us for a breakthrough, oh God, that you're preparing us for the blessings, oh God. God, you want to blow our minds, oh God. So, Lord, help us in the walk that you have created for us, oh God. God, help us to be the image that you have created, oh God. Help us to be an example example of you, O oh God, so that people would draw closer to you, O oh God. God, I ask that you would forgive us, Lord, if we said anything or done anything wrong that has hurt you in any kind of way, O oh God. God, help us to live a life that is pleasing to you, Jesus. Help us to honor you, O oh God. Help us to give our selves to you. Everything that we have, O God, help us to sacrifice our, our lives to you, God. Father, we love you and we appreciate you, God. We thank you, Lord, for your unconditional love, O God. Help us to love each other unconditionally, O God, because you don't, you don't take things too little, O God. And I ask, Lord, that you would just bring in, um, re restore, um, just restore um, relationships, O God. Brokenness, O God. I ask, Lord, that you would bring in peace and joy Oh God, I ask for that whatever depression we might be going through, whatever anxiety or financial problems that we may be going through, cancer or sickness, oh God, help us to know that you are our way maker, oh God, that you can heal, oh God, because you are the cure, oh God, you are the medicine, oh God, you are what we need, oh God. And Lord, I ask that you would touch Lighthouse, oh God. Lord, even though it's not full, help us to still worship you and praise you and thank you, oh God, because you are over Lighthouse. You have your angels surrounding this place, oh God. Help us to be a better example so that we can welcome in your people, oh God, so they would want to get right with you, that they would run after you, oh God, because you are our Father. You have the power. You have the victory, oh God. And Lord, I ask that you would touch Pastor Dale. I ask that as she brings the word that you have blessed her with, help us, oh God, to apply it to our daily lives, oh God. Just bless her right now in the name of Jesus. Touch us all, oh God. Continue to be in the midst of Oh God, we welcome you in your house, oh God, and we thank you, Father, for everything that you do. Cover us and protect us as we leave this place, oh God. Cover us and protect us as we're here right now, oh God, giving you thanks that you deserve, oh God. And we thank you, Father, and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. father who gave you life and do and don't despite your mother when she is old the father of godly children has cause for joy what a pleasure to have children who are wise happy father's day Have a seat. Why 
should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven? And home when Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is He. watches me you are here. We bless you because you're good. We bless you, Lord, because we're here, because you blessed us to be here, and we're glad about it today. We thank you, Lord, for being a good, good father. 
And we pray, Lord, that your anointing would continue to be on this service, that you would continue to be in this space with us. We ask that you would have your way now. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Come on, give our Father some praise today. Yes, 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 yes. Our daddy is worthy, is he not? Oh, come on now. Our daddy is worthy, isn't he? Yes, yes he is. Could you just take, I'm going to just give you just a couple of seconds. Just, I just want you to just, if you can stand, you stand. If you can't, you sit in your seat. But I want you to lift up some praise to daddy like he's worthy today. Come on now. Can you do that? Come on now. Open up your mouth. Lift up your voice. Come on. Let it go. You're glad to be in the presence of God today. Yay, God. Yay, God. We bless you today, Father. We bless your name today, God. We worship you today, Lord. We say thank you. We thank you, God. We bless you, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to say again to all of the fathers in the house, Happy Father's Day. We're so glad you're here with us today. I do want to take just a second to acknowledge our oldest father, part of our ministry here, and that's Elder Amos Williams. And we are glad that he is in the house today. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. But we're glad for all of you guys. It is good to be here with you today. Good to celebrate today. <clears throat> Let's get to the Word of God. The inspiration um, for this day that's dedicated to dads goes all the way back to the early 1900s. There was a woman by the name of Sonora, ain't that something, Sonora? <laughs> Sonora, <laughs> Sonora Dodds, whose mother died when she was just a child. And, or actually she died when she was in childbirth, she had other siblings. But they were raised by their dad. He was a Civil War veteran by the name of William Smart. And to express her gratitude to all her father did for her, Dodd initiated a day designated to instill the same love and reverence for the father as is the mother's portion. Dodd wrote about that day, or the day, in a 1910 newspaper article. At her urging, the very first Father's Day was celebrated on June 19th of 1910. It's no coincidence that Father's Day is celebrated in June because she chose this date based on her father's birthday. While Dodd organized the first Father's Day, more than a century ago, decades passed before it became an official holiday. However, word of the recognition spread and before long, Father's Day was celebrated across the United States with the rose being its emblem. Wearing a colored rose represented a living father while a white rose was symbolic of a father who had passed away. I know most of us thought that was just on Mother's Day. Over the years, various presidents like Calvin Coolidge and Lyndon B. Johnson commemorated the day but it wasn't until President Richard Nixon signed a proclamation in 1972 that Father's Day became an official holiday on the calendar. God bless you, fathers. Today we're going to take time to honor fathers, those whose DNA we carry, those who adopted us, raised us, nurtured us, corrected us, chastised us, encouraged us, trained us, put up with us, and helped to make us who we are today. Some of these men were not our physical father, but they've been there for us, and we are eternally grateful. Aren't you glad today? Yeah. Amen. Today we say father, dad, daddy, papa, big papa, grandfather, grandpa, uncle, or whatever other name we may call them. We love you, and we thank you for all you do and have done for us. Amen? Amen. And I know that for some of us who sit here today, myself included, Dad is no longer here. Amen. But I pray that God reminds you of each moment that you had with your father and that he gives you joy for every tear that you might shed today. For those who still have your father, don't take him for granted. Amen. Cherish each moment and make memories that will last you a whole lifetime. Amen. Amen. Would you turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're going to read verses 4 through 9 from the New Living Translation. And I am going to ask you to stand. Uh, we're not having children's church today because we're going to let the children sit with their daddies. Amen. Or grandpas or whoever it is that's here. 
Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. If you don't have your Bible, it is on the screen. The Word of God says, Listen, O Israel, the Lord is, excuse me, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. You may be seated. Today we want to say, Daddy, we need you. As we look at our text today, we see the children of Israel who are about to enter the promised land and that God has promised to give them. And through Moses, he gives them his commands, his decrees, and his regulations. Many of the other nations that they had been dealing with and that they would come across were people who practiced what we call polytheism. They thought there were many gods. They, they worshipped several gods. But God wanted them to know, the children of Israel, that there was no other God who was equal to him. He said, I'm the one, I'm the only one. Basically, he said to them, I am the complete package. I was, I am, and I always will be the one and only God. Amen? Amen. He wanted to make sure they never forgot what he had done for them, how he brought them out of slavery, how he protected them when they were in the wilderness, how he gave them this wonderful, he was giving them this wonderful rich land and God wanted all of this that he had done, all of this rich history, he wanted to be passed on throughout the generations. He didn't want it to stop when they died out. And the job of this fell to the parents, but especially to daddies. So it's based on this, all this information, that on this Father's Day we say, Daddy, we need you. We don't need you to spoil us by giving us everything we want. I know some people said, Pastor, be quiet. I don't, don't even say that. And we don't want you to allow us to do whatever it is we want to do, or we shouldn't want you to do that. No, we need you to be or to become who God called you to be so that we can become who God is calling us to be. Amen? Amen. So we're just going to get right to it, not going to waste time, because I know y'all going to take your daddies out to dinner, or you're going to cook for them, or you're going to do something for them today. If you, if you haven't seen them, call them. Lay aside the stuff. Just say, hey, Dad, happy Father's Day. That's it. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. But let's talk about it. So, Daddy, we need you. Number one, we need you to be faithful. You got to be faithful, Daddy. In the first part of the text, when God says, listen, the Lord is, our God is one God. He is the Lord alone. And he wanted them, he said, I want you to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to the commands I'm giving you today. God wants you, first of all, to be committed and, com and, and loyal to him and him alone. He said, you need to be faithful to me. That's why he said, you need to love me with everything you got. If you don't learn how to love God with everything, and the, as he lists this, your mind, heart, soul, body, strength, everything you have, which includes your money too, which includes your time, which includes your talents, God said, I want you to be committed to me. Because the only way you're going to be fully committed to your family is first you must be committed to, you, to, to God. Now, I know some of us think we're pretty committed and we don't know the Lord. God bless you. But I'm here to tell you the way to have true faithfulness, true committedness to your family is, first of all, you must have a committedness to Christ. Because he has to guide you. He's the one who's going to speak into your life. He's the one who's going to show you the way to go. He's the one going to show you how to train up your children. He's going to be the one to show you how to love your wife. All of these things that we don't know how to do outside of God. That's why we're in such a fix right now in our world. Because people think, I can do all of this without God. And some folks will tell you, I've been doing pretty good without him. Ah, uh, you might think so. But he said, I want you to be faithful to me. And then, God said, God first, then your wife, then your children. Now, I know every father's not married. 
And if you're not married, then, then this part excludes you. But I need to tell you something. God has a divine order. His order says he comes first. And then after that, it said a man and a woman shall cleave together. They shall become one flesh. Father, man's going to leave his parents. He's going to come to his wife. And they're going to be one flesh. And then after that, they bring the children. Now, we do it differently today. I know that. I'm not even going to get into no discussion with you. I'm telling you what the Bible says. And so in order to do it the right way, you got to do it God's way. And let me tell this to, to the fathers, and it goes for moms too, but since we already talked to the moms on Mother's Day, uh, the wife comes before the children. Uh-oh. Bible class is going to be good tomorrow. <laughs> the wife comes before the children. you got to keep that in mind. We love our children, but... God didn't say that the children and the daddy or the children and the mama are going to become one flesh. He said the husband and the wife shall become one flesh. That's his divine purpose. That's his divine order. When we switch that thing up, we mess up. And I don't care if it's your natural children, your stepchildren. When you have a wife or a husband, that person comes first. Next to God, of course. Okay, so I'm just trying to help us get it in, in the right order. Now, you don't have to agree with me. Just don't throw nothing at me because I got my mama here and two of my brothers, so they'll help me. <laughs> but I just, you know, we laugh, but I just want to make sure because in our families today, things are twisted. Yeah. And that's why we have so much, so, so many issues in our families because we don't have it lined up the right way. Amen. And so we may have to go back to the book and say, Lord, if, if I'm a believer... If I'm following after God, I got to follow after God. I got to follow God's way. And God's way says this is how it's supposed to be. Okay, if I did it another way, that's on me. But if I'm a believer, I got to follow God's order. Amen? Amen? And then if you look at Proverbs, and that's not, that's not going to be on the screen. But it is a scripture, and I added it just to show about faithfulness. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. I should have had it marked, and I didn't, y'all. Forgive me. Ah, now my pages want to stick together. <laughs> All right, Proverbs 3 and 4 says this. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people and you will earn a good reputation. And Solomon is the, the writer, and he tells us loyalty, that's faithfulness. Be faithful. He said, don't ever let go of the faithfulness and the kindness or the love. Don't ever let those things leave you. And when he says tie them around your neck, it's basically keep remembering them. Think about it. Don't let it go from you. Let it, let it be there to remind you over and over each day. Because when you do this, he says, have them deep in your heart. Write them in your heart. Keep them. Practice them every day. Because when you do this, that's when you're going to find favor, both with God and with man. And you're going to earn a good reputation. So, Daddy, we need you to be faithful. Amen? And because, see, when we see you being faithful, it teaches us what faithfulness looks like. Okay? Number two, Daddy, we need you to be attentive. The word attentive means mindful or, or, or observant. Basically, it's saying, spend some time with us. Some good time, some quality time. Get to know your children. Talk to them. You know, get to know, you know, see, because mothers, a lot of times, because mothers spend so much time with the children from babies on up, and, and they're there. But, Daddy, we need you to take some time, not just to fuss, not just to tell us when we messed up, but to see what we're doing, see how we're growing up, see what our likes are, see what our dislikes are. Pray over it. Ask God, show me, show me who my child is. When we hear that scripture, train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. That training up a child, it's, it's not just, uh, you know, just telling them right from wrong, those kind of things, but, it, but it's being there to look at them, to see them, to see who they are, to, to help shape them to become who it is that God intends for them to be. And understanding that every child is not going to do the same thing. You know, every child is not the same. My mother has six children, and we are all different. 
Now, we were brought up in the same house, the same way, same correcting, all that stuff, but we were different. There were, you know, some of us needed a little more heavy-handedness. Some of us just needed a, a strong word. Some of us just needed a little more encouragement, and that happens in families. That happens with our children. But if we don't take the time, or fathers, if you don't take the time to be attentive, you won't know that. You ever, you know, you, you hear sometimes in families when, when daddy's saying something about that boy ain't doing so-and-so, and mama says, well, you know so-and-so, he, he doesn't like that. He don't. When did he stop? Oh, he, he gave that up a long time ago. I didn't know that. Yeah. You weren't attentive. And I'm not, please don't hear me railing on dads, but today just happens to be Father's Day. You remember last month I said, Daddy is coming, your part's coming. Just let me talk to Mama, but... So be attentive to them. I want you in another scripture that I want to look at. Turn to the New Testament. It's, I, excuse me, it's Ephesians chapter 6. And for some of you, this will be a very familiar passage of scripture. Chapter 6, and it's verses 1 through 4. And Paul is talking to families. And he says, Children, Obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you'll have a long life on the earth. But this is the part. It says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Amen. Father, Daddy, don't provoke your children. Amen. Josh McDowell, who's an apologist and an evangelist, says, provoking is rules without relationship. Amen. You're going to do what I say because I'm your daddy. We don't talk. We don't sit together. I know you, my father. I might look just like you, got your name, but that's it. No relationships. If kids don't know you care, as he continues, they won't care about your rules. Now, they may obey them because they fear their life in some cases, but they won't care about them. You haven't taken the time to talk to them, to understand, like I said, every child is different and they're unique. God takes the time to know us personally. He is the ultimate daddy. He knows us personally, and fathers need to love their children and know that their children are unique too. Take some time with us. God wants us, fathers, I say us, he wants fathers, or actually all of us, to be good stewards, not owners of our children. We don't own them. He's given us children as a gift. The Bible said that children are a reward from God. They are a gift from God. And raising them up is what he tells us. He says that right in that chapter, uh, Ephesians, that we are to raise them up in the instruction and the discipline of the Lord. I'm not telling anybody not to discipline or correct your children. That's not what I'm saying at all. I believe that it is, is, it is right because God disciplines us when we get out of line. He straightens us out. But God takes the time to love us. He takes the time to know us. He takes the time to encourage us. He takes the time to build us up so that he doesn't just come in like, you know, every once in a while and, and, and beat us to death and then walk away. Daddy, we need you to be attentive. Amen? Amen. 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 Number three. Daddy, we need you to teach God's truth. In our scripture today, in verse 5 and 6, Moses says, And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you are getting up. To father means to teach. In many ways, they, you, we can teach our children through examples or through direct counsel and everything in between. There's a lot of ways to teach. We should be creative sometime and learn some new ways to teach. But our fathers and our stepfathers, grandfathers, uncles, they can teach us how to ride a bike and they, some of them taught us how to tie our shoes and some of them can teach us how to cook because some of them can cook better than mom, if truth be told. 
Uh, but more importantly, they can be a righteous influence who teach us how to follow God. That, that's what uh, I'm going to say Paul. Moses is telling them. You don't have to have, you know, you say, well, pastor, I'm not, a, I'm not a Bible scholar. I didn't go to Bible college. You don't have to. You teach them what you know about God. And when you get to, end of, to, uh, to the end of your knowing, then you take them somewhere where they can learn some new stuff. Like, you know, you go and you take them. I, somebody was talking to me recently about their children and them going to church. And I said, you know what? We need to take our children to church. Don't send them. Take them because you need to learn some things too. We don't know everything. We may think we do, but we don't know everything. And so what Moses is telling them is that you need to continually teach them. If you're repeating it over and over again, you know what God has done and is doing in your life. Tell them about that. Tell them where he brought you from. Tell them, you know, as you read your Bible, tell them what you're reading. Help them understand what you are reading every day. That's what Moses told them. Every single day you should be telling your children about God. Every morning when you get up, every evening when you sit down. See, some of us, you know, we'll talk about a lot of things. We are talking, you know, I'm talking about men, talking about cars, or we might be talking about uh, fixing on cars. We may be talking about carpentry stuff. We may be watching sports on TV. We do that. We teach our boys, you know, a lot of times you see with the boys, us girls, don't leave us out, but, you know, teaching them about sports and what team is the team and who's playing what and what position is this one got and who's trading this one on this team and how they're doing this. And we never say anything about God. We wait to get to church on Sunday, let the preacher do that. Well, that's not how it's supposed to be. The Bible doesn't say uh, take them to the temple and let the priests teach them. It doesn't say that at all. It said talk about them, these precepts, these, these laws. Talk about them when you are at home, in your house, when you're on the road, which means when you are traveling, talk to them about God. Just let them know he's a part of your whole life. When you're going to bed at night, talk to them before they go to bed. Let them go to bed with God on their minds. Let them wake up in the morning. He said, when you wake up in the morning, talk about God. Before you start your busy day, before you, you know, get out of the house and start running and ripping, you need to be talking to your children about who God is. It's not fair for you to leave that to somebody else when God has given that to you to do. Amen? Yes. Teach them. Teach them. You can say to them, I want you to have a relationship with God. If you have a relationship with God, you definitely ought to want your children to have a relationship with God. And so you need to be telling them, I want you to have, I want you to know God like I know God. Matter of fact, I want you to know him better than I know him. I want you to learn who he is from a little child so that you grow up to know him. Statistics show that when children come to Christ, you know, people come to Christ as children, they're more likely to stay. When some of us wait until we get old and we got so much garbage in here and we got so much messiness in our minds and in our lifestyles and we, you know, we got these um, old things that we've been holding on to that were wrong, you know, as I've said before, Paul tells us to be renewed in our minds, have your thinking changed. And so many of us, you know, that's something we struggle with. But if we would learn, if we would bring our children up as small children, young children, and we bring them up to know God, he will be a part of their life from their early life all the way up. It will be more natural for them to be able to say, I don't know anything else. I know Jesus. That, I mean, that's where I am. Uh, some of you know um, Pastor Andy Thompson. His dad, um, Pastor uh, Thompson, actually Gilbert. No, let me see. It's not Gilbert now. Gideon. And I remember... Andy was preaching at one of our youth conventions years and years ago. He was very young, and before he was pastoring, and he was saying how they had eight kids in their family, and he was saying that their dad told them, you may as well get saved because you ain't going to do nothing else. <laughs> Not in my house. <coughs> and see, some of us, oh, no, Pastor, that's a, li that's, don't you think that's a little strict, really? Would you rather them go off and, and end up somewhere else in a bad way, in jail or in hell? Not good choices. And I'm not saying because you bring them up to church, oh, they're going to automatically, no, you're going to have some struggles and you're going to have to be real in their life, but at least if you bring them up to know this, this is us, this is who we are, they are less likely to go out there and get into some deep troubles. Amen? Amen. All right. So, Daddy, we need you to be faithful, we need you to be attentive, and we need you to teach God's truth. And then next, Daddy, we need you to have a heart set on spiritual truth. Now you may say, well, what's the difference? Well, Ephesians, no, I don't even want to go there yet. You don't just 
tell them about God, but you show them. You show them by how you live. See, we need to be passing on, our men need to be passing on to the next generation. And you do that by allowing your children to see your spiritual growth, to see what's happening in your life, to see the struggles that you have. And, and, and you want them to see that, you know what, I don't always get it right, but I'm always striving to follow after God. You want them to see you when, when, you, when you're going through spiritual warfare and, and you're teaching them about putting on this whole armor of God and being able to stand against the enemy and, and what that looks like in your household. Amen. You want them to see you remembering and, and, and honoring God in, in your everyday life. You want to help them understand that, that even when I have difficulties, even when I have troubles, I know what to do because my heart is turned toward God. I know that I can go to him and I know I can, I can lay before him and he will help me through my trouble. See, too many fellas, you want to walk around like you got it. You are hurting. You are struggling. I'm all right. I'm good. No, you're not. And you know what you're teaching your children, especially your sons? To hide. To hide the hurt. To not get any help. To say, I'm good and you're bleeding inside, broken inside. And we, so we, we, Daddy, we need you to show us that I don't always get it right. I mess up. When was the last time you said to one of your children, when you know you let your temper get the best of you, you know you were wrong? When was the last time you said, you know what? I was wrong, and I want to apologize to you. Woo. Well, you said, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me, please? It was my fault. See, sometimes men, and I'm not saying all men, but sometimes, you know, this is what I've heard, you know, they feel like that makes them weak. Uh-uh. That makes you a bigger man. That makes you a stronger man to be able to acknowledge that, you know what, I'm not perfect. If I read scripture correctly, we're being perfected, all of us. It's a process that we are going through. But none of us have quite got there yet. We won't get there until we see Jesus face to face. You need to be sharing your struggles and your prayer requests with your children. Being able to say to them, can we pray together? What are you dealing with? I'm praying for you, son or daughter. Will you pray for me? Will you hold me up before God? And, and as you you're, you're have this heart for spiritual truth, you need to make time to sit down and pray with your children. Read scripture with your children. Talk about what it means. Talk about, like I said before, talk about who God is in your life and why it's important to go to him and why it's important that we pray together. Reminding them that scripture tells us to confess our sins one to another and pray one for another. James tells us to do that. And you need to be modeling that. You know, we can, we say things, we throw things out, but do they ever see you model what you tell them they ought to be doing? See, the spiritual truths are also being a person of integrity, being a person who's honest, being a person that they can look at and say, my dad, uh-uh, my father is an honest man. And he doesn't just talk about it, he shows it. And he doesn't just tell me I need to do things right. He does things right so I can see the example of what doing things right looks like. That's what we need to see today. We got enough folks barking at us and telling us what we ought to be doing. But we need to see some examples of people that are actually doing it. And we need to see that in our men, our fathers. Let them know, I'm your dad. And I love you. I love you like my father, God, loves me. Let your children know that you will never have to worry about me loving you. I will always love you. I may not always like the decisions you make. I may not always agree with how you do things. But son or daughter, that's one worry you will never have because your daddy will always love you. Amen. And he will always be there for you. Just like as you're talking to him, as my father has been for me. Now maybe with some of us, maybe your earthly daddy, he wasn't, that wasn't him. But we're talking about daddy, daddy. Amen? Amen. All right. So, Daddy, 
We need you to have a heart set on spiritual truth. And then daddy, we need you to earnestly lead us. Lead your children. In verses seven through nine, I read part of that. But what we are seeing here when he says, repeat them to the, your children again and again, talk to them about it all the time, tie them to your hands, wear them on your forehead, write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Now, uh, there's discussion as to was this literal or figurative? And some say that it was, you know, if it, it was literal, and you see some people, they have these little um, phylacteries, I think they call them, they have them tied on them or on a little pouch on their side. But many people say, no, this wasn't, you know, literally to do this. It meant that when you all of these decrees and laws, as, as, as Moses is going to show them, they were to put them inside and walk it out, live it out. That was how they were supposed to live their lives. And again, Daddy, we need you to show us what following God looks like. We need you to set and be a godly example for us. We need you to show, and please hear me, show your daughters what a godly man looks like. They need to see that. If you say you're a godly man, then show them what a godly man, based on what God says, not the stuff you came up with, what God says a godly man ought to look like. Because one day, somebody gonna come saddling up to your daughter. And if you haven't given her a good example to follow, she just might follow off after somebody who's not the one. And remind your daughters, um, the Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Amen. Daughters are not supposed to be out there trying to find some man. Amen. Please hear me, ladies. We're supposed to step back. They're supposed to be on the hunt, not us. Yes. And a godly father is going to teach his daughter that. So she ain't out there, you know, just running, looking. I got to find me a man. I need a man. Tell her, guess what? Till that man come along, I'm going to be the man. Me and God, we're going to be the men in a good way. But you need to teach her. She needs to see in you an example how you treat her mother. And, and let me say this. Even if you're not married to her mother or his mother, treat that woman as you would want to be treated because that's what the Bible tells us to do. Treat them with honor and respect. It, it doesn't, you know, we'll say, but you don't know how they are. They got a nasty attitude. They be saying stuff. God's not going to hold you for their attitude and what they say. He's going to hold you for yours and what you say. And so you need to be honoring them because, again, that is the mother of your child. And whether you like them or not, that child may very much love them a whole lot. And they may look at you and be like, but I thought you were a godly man. And you say those things about my mama? And then the wife that is in your house, treat her with honor and respect. Love her. Care for her. That's what the Bible tells you to do. Care for your wife. Love your wife. Make sure her needs are met. Seeing about her. Because your daughter will be looking at that. If you, if you disrespect her mother, if you dishonor her mother, she may grow up to think, well, if he's, my daddy said he was a godly man, and if this is what he does, I guess this is what I can expect when I get married. And she will settle. You don't want your daughter to settle. No. And then, Daddy, show your sons how a godly man behaves himself. Because you want him to be godly when he grows up and when he goes to find a wife. You want him to be a man of God. You want to show him by the example that you set how a man of God handles his business, how he walks out this walk of, of godliness. Don't just tell them, Daddy. Lead them. Show them. Last week we talked about establishing patterns of godly living. That's what you need to be doing in your godly home, Daddy, is establishing godly patterns. Don't leave that to your wife. Y'all should be doing it together, but certainly you ought to be initiating it. Saying, babe, we gotta, we gotta change some things in our house. We've been letting some stuff slide and God has been speaking to me about it and we need to correct some stuff. It's gonna take some time. Because if you've had no godly patterns, you're going to have to tear up some stuff and redo some stuff and start all over again. But that's okay. God's going to help you. If you start doing what he tells you to do, he's going to give you all the help you need to get it done. You don't even have to worry about it. But daddy, lead. 
show how it's supposed to be done. Joshua, who was a mighty man of God, that's what his name means. He says in Joshua 24, verse 15, he's talking to folks about how they were going to be, and he said, which way are you going to go? You're going to go after these gods, these, these crazy things, and, and, and these gods who are not really God, or are you going to serve the real God? He said, choose today who you're going to serve. But he said this, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. He was speaking for his whole house, his whole, his clan. He said, me and my, we're going to do the right thing. So daddy, may you be like Joshua who says, in my house, we're going to serve God. And I'm going to lead the way. I'm not going to tell y'all to do it, and I'm going to do something else. I, I, don't, I, don't, you know, I, I want to do the things the right way. I want to be the man of God that he has called me to be. And even though, and you telling your children, even though sometimes I may mess up, I may stumble, but may I always be one who is looking after God. If I fall, if I mess up, may I get up, admit that I messed up, admit that I failed, and say, God, I want to do the right thing. I don't want to just, you know, we fall down and we say, well, I done failed so many times. I just can't even, I ain't going to get back. I'm just going to be like this. Don't do that. And God will give you the strength you need to not do that. Because he wants you to go in the right direction. Amen? Amen. And lastly, Daddy, we need you, Daddy, to be responsive. Be responsive. Responsive means to be sensitive to the needs of your family, your children. If you got a wife, your wife. Stop being too busy to be responsive, to be sensitive. We know you work, you work hard, we hope you do. Taking care of your family, but you can't be too busy and your family just goes separate ways. I remember my mom telling me about somebody, this was years ago, and um, mama and daddy both were too busy. Mama would cook. They had food every day. Nobody could go hungry. But the problem was mama would cook, leave it on the stove. Daddy was somewhere. Mama was somewhere. Children come in. This one ate and go back out. That one come in, eat, go back out. That one come in, eat. And you could go to their home anytime and there wasn't nobody around, you know, just... Too busy, doing life, doing stuff. And sadly to say, their family didn't grow up to have a good outcome. Didn't happen. So daddy, you may have to put some things aside. You may have to put some things on the back burner for a while to be responsive to your family, to be sensitive to the needs that are in your family. With your children, until they know God, and understand who God is and how he meets our needs, you must be that example for them in your family. You see, you can tell them God's going to take care of it. They can't see God. I'm talking about your children. They don't see God. They see you. And, and they have needs. And you know, you understand, we understand as we get older, God will make a way. God will open doors. God will help us to do what we need to do. But he many times uses us to do that. And so we need to be showing our children, Daddy, if they have needs, I'm here. I'm going to take care of it. But see, what you need to do, is, it's, it's by God's grace that we're able to do what we do. I know life gets hard sometimes. Sometimes we fall on hard times. Sometimes money is just not there to do all of the things that we might need in a family. We need to understand, number one, though, that God promised to take care of our needs. Okay, if I understand it, or if you as a father understands that, you need to be teaching that to your children, but you need to be going to him to talk to him about it. But in the meantime, you know, as, as you have what you need and, and you're there, meet the needs of your family. There is a scripture in Colossians chapter 3, verse 19, and it says, and again, don't, don't take it wrong, husband, fathers. It says, husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Hear what God is saying. And then down in verse 21 of that same uh, chapter, he says, Fathers, do not aggravate your children or they will become discouraged. There are people, fathers, who are hard fathers, just being honest. 
hard just because that's the way they want to be. And sometimes they've made their families to suffer just because. It's not fair to the family, and it's not God's way for the family. And there are people today, and I know some personally, they're angry or distant from God because of the fathers that they had. Because when they try to think about God as a father, all they can see is that father who was abusive or just mean or just hard. He didn't have a reason that we could see. Maybe it was because his daddy was hard. Maybe because he had had a rough upbringing. But I can't hold you for what he did. It's not fair. And, and God wants you to be responsive or sensitive. You don't, again, make them just suffer because, well, you, you'll be all right. You'll make it. Keep on. Maybe tomorrow will be a better day for you. I mean, I've heard folks say those kind of things. You're not, you're not helping them to grow up to understand God. You're helping them to grow up to resent God. Because they'll think, he, is he the same kind of father as what I had? If he is, I don't want him. Some of us struggle with believing God could love us because of the father that we grew up with. Because it's like, I, I don't know. I, you know I've, I've had discussions with people. and I, You know, we used to sing a song. Um, let me see, was that Falling in Love with You? One of the songs was about father. And somebody came and they said, I struggle with that song because of my dad. Because of the kind of father I grew up with. And I had to have a conversation with them about how God is not that father. He's, he's, he's a real father. He's really there for you. He really loves you. He really cares for you. He's really going to meet your needs because these are the promises that he has given to us. He doesn't break promises like some fathers have broken. He isn't mean for the sake of meanness. He corrects us when we're wrong. He does that. But that's because he loves us. So, Daddy, strive to be the kind of father that God is to you. And if you yourself had a rough daddy and you struggle with that, you need to, be, you, you need to talk to somebody who could kind of help you understand that. You need to be talking to God and ha ask, Lord, I'm, I'm messed up. I'm still holding things in me that my father did or that he missed doing. And now I see myself becoming like him. And I said I would never be like him. But now I see it. God, I need you to help me. I want to be a better father. I want to be, you know, and we're talking about being sensitive. I, I want to be a father who instills confidence in my children. I want my children to grow up to know that they are loved. I want my children to grow up to know that I will meet every need that I can meet. And when I can't meet it, I'm going to go to the great need meter. You introduce them to him, to God himself, and tell them there is a God who loves you beyond me. I try to love you with everything I got, but trust me, baby, I fall short sometimes. But I know a man who will love you like you have never been loved. Daddy, you got a really big job. It's not easy. I'm not even going to tell you that. Some would say, Pastor, I, I think it's impossible. Well, without the Lord, it could be. But with him, it's not. Because he said, with men, it is impossible. But with God, turn that down, Sister Jeffrey. But with God, all things are possible. Everything is. And so... Fathers, there's a lot on your shoulders, a lot you have to do. God has called you to be, number one, to be the man he wants you to be. And he will equip you with everything you need to become that man if you'll give yourself over to him. You could turn up a little bit there, just not too loud. <coughs> When he gives us or gave you your children, he gave you these beautiful little babies who were totally dependent upon you and mom. And according to scripture, he told you to raise them up to know him, 
to love him, to honor him. You can't raise them up to do that if you yourself don't love God and honor him and trust him. So you got to start right there. You got to say, Lord, do I have a relationship with you? Not just in word, but, but am I living according to the plan you have set for me? And, and some of us, you know, as, as some of you, as I look out over the room, some of you are older and your children are grown. That opportunity is done. But you may have some grandchildren. You may have some neighborhood kids that are growing up around you. You may have some nieces and nephews. There are children in the church. There are all kind of opportunities for you to be a father. You can't take over from somebody else's, but you can be that kind of brother that's there, that man who's there that, that can give you some wise counsel, that man who can show you. You know, we all have some men that we can, or most of us, we can look at and say, boy, I remember him. He encouraged me so much on this particular day, or he prayed for me this time, or when I thought I had messed up and I was beyond the reach of God, he came and he talked to me and, and he encouraged me to get up and, and help me to find the right path. We have men in our life like that, and we are grateful for them. And if you say, I, I can't, you know, I, I'm, I'm, my kids are raised. I can't do that anymore. And I can try to have good relationship with them since they're grown. And if there's some fences that need to be mended or some, some brokenness that needs to be put back together, you ask God, give me an opportunity, God, to make it right the best I can. But you say, Father, I miss that. Maybe I wasn't saved then. Maybe I didn't know. I wasn't walking with God then. I didn't know what to do. But I'm understanding now. And especially to our older guys, we have younger men, even in our church and even in your own lives and in your neighborhoods that are now fathers bringing up children. You need to be men of wisdom, men who can talk to them, men who can tell them, let me share with you some of the things of God that you need to know as you're bringing up your children. And be honest with them, maybe I messed up, I'm, I'm here to tell you, but I know better now. And I'm just sharing with you what I believe God would have you to know. But Daddy, we need you to be a father. That's that acronym. Faithful, attentive, uh, teaching God's truth. Have a heart for God's truth. What was the E? Oh, Lord, my mind just went blank. I'm getting older, y'all. Earnestly. There you go. See, y'all remember? Oh, no, y'all saw it on the screen. I thought y'all remember. Y'all saw it on the screen. I was looking down. <laughs> Earnestly lead us and be responsive. If that's, the, if that's you today and you say, Pastor, I, I got it. I'm, I'm, God has blessed me and I learned and I'm doing that. Praise the Lord. Share what you got with somebody else. Pray for them. But if you look at that list of, you know, that acronym and you say, I'm falling short in one of these areas or in many of these areas, you don't have to give anybody, uh, you know, telling, say to anybody what's going on. But if you feel like I'm not quite there, I want to be a better daddy. I want to make sure my children that I'm raising right now are growing up to know God. I want to make sure I'm showing them by my godly example. I'm saying to them, follow me as I follow Christ, not do as I say and not what I do. You want to be an example of God to your children in your household. Or even if you have children that are not in your household, but you say, you know what? I can still love on them. I can still teach them. I can still show them Jesus. If that's you today, I want to pray for you. So I'm just going to invite you to make your way. Not going to linger long, but I just want to make sure we want to pray for any men that feel like they need prayer today. You want to bring your babies with you? Bring them. That's all right, too. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Our God is an awesome God. He's here for us at every turn. Thank you, God. Thank you, my Father. Anybody else before we pray? Thank you, Daddy. I like Brother Robert's shirt. It says, Dope Black Daddy or Black Dad. <laughs> Father, we just want to say thank you for being a, a good daddy, for loving us like we can't even... Uh, we don't even sometimes have the right words to express it. We never felt a love like yours till we came to know you. Some of us were loved greatly by our parents, by other people, but it didn't compare with the love of God. 
God, I thank you for these men who have stepped up. Stepped up and said, I want to be that dad. I want to love my children like God loves me. I want to be in their lives every day. I want to encourage them and not provoke them. I don't want to push them away from God by my misbehavior. I want to show them that I'm a real father. And sometimes I make mistakes. I mess up. But when I do, I'm not too big to say I messed up. I'm not too big to own it. I'm not too big to say I'm sorry. I'm not too big to say, can we pray together about this? Would you pray for me? I want to be that father who shows them what a godly man looks like, how he operates, how he lives his life daily, not just when he comes to church on Sunday, not the one who can talk good church talk, but the one who when situations get rough, when, when life gets hard, I'm still in it with God because he has proven himself to me. And Father, I'm grateful for these who have come who say, maybe I'm not all there yet, but I'm striving. I want to get there. I want to be there. I want to be that father. I want to be the man of God that he has called me and is calling me to be. I want to be that man who loves hard, who stands strong, who protects my family, who's there for them. They don't ever have to worry about, is daddy going to be there for me? Because I'm there. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm not walking away. I'm not giving up. Maybe somebody gave up on me, but I'm not them. God, I thank you. I'm praying for not just these, my brothers, but I'm praying for others that are in the room and those who will listen to the sermon later online. I am praying for brothers today, men today, who will say, I need God. I need him. I need what he has for me. I need him in my life because I don't know what to do without him. I've made many mistakes. I don't want to keep making the same mistake over and over again. And so I'm here today, God. And I'm asking you, Lord, to show me how to do it right. Show me how to live my life as an example of your godliness, Lord. Show me how to love my children. Show me how to love my wife if I have a wife so that they can see me loving her. They can see me honoring her. They can see me respecting her. They can see me doing, being there for her. They can see me, Lord, just being at peace with her. And Lord, maybe some are, they don't, they don't have a wife. They got children, but they don't have a wife. Teach them how to honor that child's mother in a way that they would honor you. God, would you just have your way? Would you just speak into our lives? And Lord, if there are those here or those listening who don't know you as Savior, I'm praying for them today that something that was said, something they heard, something they felt, they would be drawn to you. And they would say, I don't know Jesus. I don't have a relationship with him. But based on what I hear, I want to begin a relationship with Christ. I want to come along and see what this is all about. And I pray, God, today that you would put people in their path, those who are not here, that will say, I'm here because God told me to come. God has sent me to you, and I'm here to walk with you. I'm here to, to do life with you. I'm here to show you what it means to be a follower of Christ. I'm here to, to as, as a person, Lord, let them, let them know there's some changes that will have to be made in their life. But God will be there for them. He will walk with them. He will keep them. Father, would you just have your way today? We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do. It's in the awesome name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you give God some praise? Amen. Amen.